What's good everyone? This is JTech and in this video, we're going to cover something nice and it's from Ipo Maker. Thank you very much once again. Before we go ahead and check it out, can you hit the subscribe button for me please? Let's go! So this is the Tide 75 by Ipo Maker. It's a bigger brother of the Tide 65 and the only two differences are, of course, their size and layout. And it's very obvious. You can tell by their names, right? 65, 75. It is a tri mode with the two wireless modes, the Bluetooth and the 2.4 dongle, with a decent battery capacity of 4000 milliamps, of which could last up to a week of usage without the backlight and around three to four weeks when you're just using a Bluetooth mode. All right, inside the box, we can find the standard Type C cable, a two in one switch and kick up puller and an allen wrench for opening the keyboard and a dust cover for protecting your keyboard when not in use. So without further ado, here's a quick typing sound test right out of the box. Well, I mean, right? The stub sounds properly tuned to me, and I like how it sounds as a stock keyboard. By the way, this is the version 1 of the Tide 75. It's using the one and only switch option for this keyboard called the Lemon Switch. It's a 40G linear that is made up of a nylon and foam material, and it's a standard for both gaming and typing. The keycaps is an OEM profile, double shot PBT material with a futuristic or robotic side printed fonts, which I find it a bit off. Why? Well, because they did not label this or advertise it as a gaming keyboard. What? And it's the only part of the keyboard that looks and feel cheap to be honest, but oh. it is what it is. Now let me show you the version 2 of this keyboard where we will just replace the keycaps into this gradient cherry profile keycaps and replace the switches with this zebra switches which is a linear and already factory loop and this was also used in my Saidu Stellar ABM081 kit build video And there you go, so which version do you like more? Is it the V1 or the V2? Please let me know in the comments. Now, let's talk about the design and the build quality of this keyboard. First and foremost, it is built like a tank. It's real solid and very heavy because this is a full metal 6063 aluminum housing that weighs around 2.2 kilograms. There are three more colors other than this one, the purple, pink, and blue, but I really dig this color than those. It's an anodized black with a gold chrome accents, which made it more premium and appealing. Just don't mind the chrome accent on the knob. I think they placed the wrong one. Just kidding. But seriously, why chrome? Why chrome? Huh? Also, the surface is very smooth, but it's very prone to fingerprints, smudges, and oils. So you better wipe it off every after use. At the back, we can find the power toggle switch, and thank God, it's a black color instead of a silver or gray. Also, there's a magnetic dongle packet for the USB receiver. The Type-C port is located at the leftmost side of the keyboard. Finally, my favorite part of this keyboard, this shiny bottom plate thing that made this keyboard a lot premium. Man, look at that. So I really like how the stock stabilizers are properly tuned and it's really stable. The FR4 plate reminded me of my High 75 before, which I am a big fan of really nice and sturdy. You can also use a different layout configuration, something like a double split spacebars with this keyboard, but you need to buy a different plate and keycaps in order to do that. What I don't like about this keyboard is the keycaps because it made it look like a gamer's keyboard to me, which it really does not complement with the premiumness look of this keyboard. If you have any other keycaps that you like, just use them. I'm not saying that this is bad or something like that, but yes, it's just my personal preference and I really can't stand the fonts. Just saying. A quick tip in order to make the LED or RGB shines better, you have to use a switch with a transparent housing. 
And you should keep the light on in order to see the fonts to avoid typos or mistyping. You can buy this keyboard on their website for only $120 to $140 pre-built. No barebone option yet but I hope they'll have an option for that soon. I'm not really sure about the price of the version 2 yet but I highly suggest you get that instead of the V1 when it's available. But to be honest, I already consider this as a good premium pre-built 75% layout mechanical keyboard that does not need any modding at all. You can just use it right away out of the box and it will sound amazing. Yes! Really solid keyboard right here. And oh, by the way, I almost forgot this keyboard is a VIA or a QMK compatible. So yes, you can freely customize it the way you want it. Now that's really a crazy good deal for the price point. That's it guys. If you like this video, consider subscribing. It helps this channel a lot. This is JTech. Please enjoy the final sound test of my own version. And I will see you around. Goodbye. Thank you.